Okay, come back. We'll get started. Yes, sir. <laughs> I gave you, I gave you four minutes, or no, six minutes. Lisa, you may have won the race, so I did. I, I think you did, but you, you've got a contender right beside you there. So, <laughs> What's he I call the meeting to order tonight. This is the city council meeting, regular meeting of May seventeenth. Call it to order. First order of business is our invocation and our Pledge of Allegiance. Um, please remain standing, but tonight we have uh, Pastor Anthony Edwards from the First Presbyterian Church. Pastor, if you would please. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you and we thank you, Lord, for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Lord, for another light of day, Father, that we're able to see. We thank you for this opportunity as we come together, Father, for our city, in our community, Father, and we just pray for our mayor as well as all of our council members that you would touch them with wisdom and knowledge as we move forward with the agenda of tonight. But Father, we wanted to re recognize you and thank you for all the things that you have already done in the city of Cassidy Grand, all the things that you're going to do, and all the things that you're doing right now that we don't see, nor do we realize or recognize that it's you working behind the scenes. So we thank you and we honor you and we just pray that we continue to walk in wisdom and knowledge that at the end of the day, it'll be well done with you. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Still in the community. Thank you. Go Cardinals, too. Go Cougars. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's that other team, too. But <laughs> Thank you, Bob. He, Thank he you. works with some other team, too. Yeah. I think the Cardinals or something yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. All right. Let the roll call show that all members of the council are present. So noted. Mayor McFarland, regarding our minutes, I move approval of the city council regular meeting minutes from May 3rd as presented, and then we accept for the record the planning and zoning commission minutes from April 1st, and the art and humanities commission minutes from April 6th as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, minutes are approved. Next is claims. Mayor McFarland, I move to accept and pay the claims dated April 28th to May 11th, 2021 as presented. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second to approve the claims. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I abstain. Okay, note Lisa Fitzgibbons abstain. Item E is the meeting agenda approval. So Larry, any changes from staff or anything on from council? Okay, seeing none, then I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So move moved. approval as presented. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second to approve tonight's agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the agenda is approved as presented. We have no special presentations tonight, so we'll move to consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine matters and will be enacted by one motion and one roll call vote of the council. There'll be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or member of the public so requests in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence of the agenda. Does anybody have anything that you want to pull off? Anybody from the public? Okay. Mayor McFarland, I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Carla, can I please get a roll call vote? Council Member Lavender? Yes. Council Member McBride? Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons? Yes. Council Member Herman? Yes. Council Member Powell? Yes. Count Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston? Yes. Mayor McFarland? Yes. The 
The public comments. Can I make a comment on this section, Larry, since it's been scratched? <laughs> Actually, I should have asked Brett. No, I, I think you can certainly comment on things, but we can't ask for comments from the public. Right. I wasn't going to ask for a comment. I just wanted to give some clarification. The uh, public comments have been taken off because of the of the pandemic and the COVID protocols that we've been following. So I was going to do this in my reports, but I could do it now. We're going to we're going to uh, look at we're not look going to look at we are going to probably change our protocols effective June first. That means that by the June seventh city council meeting, we will resume public comments. They will be back on the agenda. So I wanted to make sure that everybody knew that. Uh, we're also going to change the capacities in here as long as things continue the way they have been, which has been looking good. So uh, just look for that information. We'll probably get it out through our PIO here in the next week or two. All right, moving then to item I, which is our words of contracts and considering ordinance uh, or I-1, which is ordinance number 3267. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, this item before you will renew a managed print services agreement between the City of Casa Grande and Xerox Business Solutions. This is a five-year agreement on the Arizona State Contract ADSP 018-216033 and the Safe Contract 2011113. This agreement has a better cost structure than the current agreement that we we run under on the, the Mojave Cooperative. This month, the month-to-month -month spend will drop from seven thousand seven hundred and eighty-nine dollars to five thousand eight hundred and sixty-nine dollars, resulting in monthly savings of one thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars. This wow, will refresh. Wow, went down. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> this will refresh multifunction printer hardware that is showing its age without a steep initial investment. The estimate um, for this investment is $170,492. This contract seeks also to standardize multifunction printers, printer hardware across 21 facilities, and consolidate smaller HP printers where opportunities exist. It will introduce flexible printing and other features that are expected to reduce overall print volume by approximately 30% over time. Currently, we have multifunction printers. We have a count of 35. And HP desktop printers, we have a count of 83. We're seeking to reduce that count for multifunction printers to 24 and HP desktop printers to 55 and that's providing more state-of-the-art functionalities across 21 facilities. After evaluation of the value and terms, staff determined that the quoted price was a good rate to provide managed print services to the city with updated hardware and functionalities. We recommend accepting the contract with a total not to exceed the cost of $441,617, including sales tax and contingency, for a five-year term. I will entertain your questions if you have any. I also invited our IT manager, Aaron, um, to sit in on this meeting to address any questions you have that may be IT-related. Anybody have any questions? It's Just a, a savings. Just a note, the Mojave is, is out, of the, uh, out of this now, aren't they? Yes, they will be out once yeah. the contract. Yes, yeah. once the contract is signed and initiated. Any other questions or comments? All right, thank you. Thank you. Seeing no more questions or comments, then I'll call for an ordinance number, please, Carla. Almost or called you Gloria. <laughs> ordinance number three two six seven, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, accepting a bid from Xerox Business Solutions for the purpose of managed print services, authorizing the expenditure of public funds, and authorizing the execution of a contract with or purchase order to Xerox Business Solutions. 
Mayor McFarland, I would move for approval of ordinance 3267 as presented. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Carla, can I please get a roll call vote? Council Member Lavender? Yes. Council Member McBride? Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbon? Yes. Council Member Herman? Yes. Council Member Powell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston? Yes. Mayor McFarland? Yes. All right, the next item is I-2, consider ordinance number 3268. Mr. Lewis. Good evening. With your permission, I'd like to cover the next three items in uh, one discussion, and then you can take action on them separately if that's okay. That would be great, thank you. Uh, Mayor, City Council, um, this is our annual um, on-call contracts process. We've gone through the uh, request for qualifications on three programs. Uh, the first one is our on-call maintenance and repair services program. This is for our public works department working on larger projects throughout the community, and it's also available for other departments to take advantage of, like uh, the parks department, golf course, um, anybody doing some of those larger projects. Uh, this could include uh, small paving projects, concrete work, uh, those types of things. Not to be confused with our facilities maintenance uh, contract uh, and repair services, which is more for our facilities. That's the indoor stuff, uh, carpentry, HVAC systems, lighting systems, plumbing, those types of things. And then our third one, which is our professional services contract, and that's for us to go out and uh, hire the uh, people who do consulting services for us. And uh, again, all three of these programs have been very successful. Um, the the I, I2 is the uh, maintenance and repair services. That's gonna be 28 uh, different contracts. So you'll be approving all of those contracts tonight and then none of those contracts will be moved forward with unless we uh, negotiate a uh, price, scope, and fee uh, for any of those projects. And then the, uh, the appropriate budget has to have that authority to move forward with that project. And the uh, uh, limits on that is no single project of $24,999, and then an annual aggregate uh, over $150,000 for any single contractor. With the professional services, we are able to use a, uh, a uh, higher limit, and that is a $100,000 for any single contract and no more than 150 uh, for aggregate. And of course, consulting services uh, with those projects and with the number of projects that we have coming up and, and needing to react to in pretty short order to meet some of the timelines that we're facing with some of the developments. This really gives us the flexibility to uh, move forward in a, a quick fashion to uh, get things completed. And then um, the last one has the, uh, uh, for the uh, facilities, has the same uh, $24,999 uh, per contract and then no aggregate over $150. So um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any idea of how many of the up to, I think you said 35, any idea of how many are local? I don't write offhand. I know okay. that uh, a majority of the contracts or at least um, a good portion of the contracts in our uh, facilities maintenance, those are our locals and we always try to reach out to our local vendors first to make sure that uh, uh, they have the capability of moving forward with the project before we go out of town. But we do try to use our local uh, folks as much as we yeah. can. <coughs> Anyone else have any questions? Mayor, I have a quick one. Sure. So I know we've done this for several years. Do you, I mean, you must not get complaints because you've done it for so long, but <coughs> the only thing I worry about is someone may have missed it and they're not on the list and, you know, they miss it a couple of years. So um, I, I'm assuming no, since you've done this for so many years, that, that people we don't. Get, are we get lots of complaints. Oh. <laughs> so we've, we've worked very uh, diligently you with our local contractors to make sure they know when things are okay. coming out. And if we have... Uh, contracts that that we want to move forward with in the future we make sure that those firms or those uh, contractors know about this in advance everyone who signs up 
uh, through the city clerk's portal that you know is interested in in uh, taking advantage of these opportunities gets notice it's typically somebody dropping the ball okay so we've done our best to make sure that people who want to be part of this program have the information they need to be part of it well and but, i think that's my and that's my concern i just want to make sure that the communication is out there but i would think since we've done this for several years they may have learned the first year or second year um, you know, the way the process works. So I would hope that they would catch on after the, a couple of years. Because I know we've they, done this for they a while. Need, they need to go onto our website, right? Exactly. And if, and if anybody goes onto our website, the first thing that mm -hmm. pops up is, hey, do you want us to continue to communicate with you? Mm -hmm. And if you don't click yes, mm -hmm. you're not going to get notifications. Right. So people have to get right. involved. And yeah, and the other complaint that we get is we don't use some contractors. Right. Um, you know, there's no guarantee that we'll use someone. It's if we need them, they're there for us, and we have the contract in place for us to move forward with those negotiations and then move forward with the project. Um, you know, we've found it very successful program so far. We'd love to see the limits higher, but we have a little thing called our city charter that kind of limits us, as our city attorney will remind us every time we submit uh, for higher uh, amounts. But uh, that is one thing that uh, we're, we're looking forward to. Um, the other thing I'm looking forward to is if we ever do, uh, as we discussed uh, in the uh, council retreat, about bringing a procurement uh, person on, this is something that we're going to mm -hmm. make sure they understand and help us run it and maybe uh, clean up some of the issues that we've had with you know staff maybe dropping the ball here or there. Okay. Good. And it'll be consistent too, because it'll be the same person. Right between all departments thank you Kevin all right seeing no further questions or comments then I'll consider ordinance uh, number three two six eight ordinance number three two six eight an ordinance of the council of the city of Casa Grande Arizona approving the terms and conditions of 28 agreements with various companies for the purpose of providing various maintenance and repair services for fiscal year 2022, authorizing expenditure of public funds and authorizing execution by the city manager of the 28 agreements. Mayor, I move to approve ordinance 3268 as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Carla, can I please get a roll call vote? Council member Lavender? Yes. Council member McBride? Yes. Council member Fitzgibbons? Yes. Council member Herman? Yes. Council Member Powell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston? Yes. Mayor McFarland? Yes. All right, the next is I-3. You've already discussed, <coughs> right? So we're going to uh, move and consider <coughs> ordinance number 3269. Mm -hmm. Ordinance number 3269, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, approving the terms and conditions of 35 agreements with various companies for the purpose of providing various professional services for fiscal year 2022, authorizing expenditure of public funds, and authorizing execution by the city manager of the 35 agreements. Mayor McFarland, I move uh, approval of ordinance number 3269 as presented. Second. All right, I have a motion. And I also was happy to do that because there's 35 on mine and there was only 28 on the other one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Powell. All right, um, having a, a motion and a second, can I please get a roll call vote? Council Member Lavender? Yes. Councilmember McBride? Yes. Councilmember Fitzgibbons? Yes. Councilmember Herman? Yes. Councilmember Powell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston? Yes. Mayor McFarland? Yes. Now, I-4 only has 15, Mr. Powell. You're not <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've had this discussion as well, so we'll consider ordinance number 3270. Ordinance 3270, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, approving the terms and conditions of 15 agreements with various companies for the purpose of providing various facilities maintenance and repair services for fiscal year 21, 2021 to 2022, authorizing expenditure of public funds 
and authorizing execution by the city manager of the 15 agreements. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve ordinance number 3270 and the 15 agreements, which would bring me up to 43, Councilman. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. I, I object. <laughs> I second it. <laughs> All right, I have a motion and a That's second a to approve ordinance number 3270. Carla, can I get a roll call vote, please? Council Member Lavender. Yes. Council Member McCry. Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons. Yes. Council Member Herman. Yes. Council Member Powell. Sneaky, but yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston. Yes. Mayor McFarland. It's why he's a, a school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, next item on our agenda is I-5, consider ordinance number 3271. <coughs> Kevin, this one's yours too. I'm gonna be here for a little while. <laughs> uh, staff recommends that the mayor and city council authorize the city manager to execute a contract with Sturgeon Electric Company for a base bid amount of $102,088 with a contingency of 2,912 for a total amount of $105,000. Uh, for the installation of streetlights within the Cottonwood Gardens subdivision. Uh, if you don't already know, Cottonwood Gardens is a subdivision that is just north of Cottonwood Lane and west of Thornton Boulevard. So um, uh, this neighborhood currently has no streetlights in it, and this is an opportunity for us to um, use CDBG funds that were originally uh, programmed in 2019 to finish this project. So um, we've been working towards uh, this point to have these 13 new street lights uh, installed. And these are solar street lights. Uh, so this is something that uh, we've done on several occasions in other areas where we don't have the infrastructure to take advantage of underground power, so we're using solar in, in this location. Um, this budget does have, uh, or this project does have adequate uh, budget fund funded for it uh, through the CDBG program. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Matt? I got one question, Kevin. <coughs> How long do these lights last? Or the, the batteries, I guess, is the, the big issue. Uh, typically, I don't know specifically about this one, but uh, the solar lights that we've used in the past had a 10-year warranty. Um, but we've been seeing uh, really good performance and everything that uh, we've done with our uh, due diligence on the products, uh, I think we're gonna get a lot more than that. Yeah. And typically it's not, you have to replace the whole thing, it's a component. Uh -huh. in, in Arizona, those are the batteries, but right. uh, they've come a long ways uh, with batteries. Uh, the last time I think uh, <coughs> I looked six years ago, there was a three year warranty on batteries and now they're up to 10. So obviously right. things are changing. Thanks. Great. Any other questions of Kevin? I just have a comment. Um, yeah, go ahead, Don. And Many, many years ago, we put this development in the city and it wasn't. And I remember Mr. Powell going to one of the community meetings because this is where my mother resided. And he um, met with the citizens and, and he really started this process. So they are very appreciative of everything that is the city has done for them, including the streets. And this is just another example. So uh, kudos to Mr. Powell for seeing the foresight on that. Kevin, how many street lights is it going to be? 13. 13. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, then I'll call for an ordinance number 3271, please, Carla. Ordinance number 3271, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, accepting a bid from Sturgeon Electric Company, Incorporated, to provide construction of the program year. 2019 Community Development Block Grant Solar Powered Streetlight Project, authorizing expenditure of public funds and authorizing the execution of a contract. Mayor McFarland, I move approval of ordinance number 3271 as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Can I please get a roll call vote, Carla? Council Member Lavender? Yes. Council Member McBride? Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons? Yes. Council Member Herman? Yes. Council Member Powell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston? Yes. Mayor McFarland? Yes. All right, that finishes the ayes. Let's go to K. Is ordinance and, re and resolutions and other matters are subject to requiring action of the council. 
First item is item K, which is resolution number 5299. Mr. Thank Lewis. you. Staff is recommending that the Mayor and City Council authorize the City Manager to apply for and accept grant funds from the Arizona Department of Transportation, and this is their aeronautics division, uh, for runway 523 and connector taxiway pavement preservation in an amount not to exceed $725,000 and to execute uh, all grants, uh, contract documents, distribute funds, and perform necessary budget transfers. Uh, the Aeronautics Group, uh, part of ADOT's multi-modal uh, multi planning division, uh, develops a five-year airport capital improvement program. And the program provides for state-funded grants and approves those projects uh, for uh, state uh, local funding uh, that have met the state's transportation board's uh, qualifying priority rating. So um, state aviation funds are distributed and uh, there's three major areas that uh, they distribute these particular funds. It's design construction, which this project is part of that, and then there's also planning and land acquisition. And the state transportation board approves uh, the distribution annually. So we're very fortunate to have this opportunity to uh, apply for and receive this, these grant funds. Hopefully we'll be successful. And this process, process does uh, kind of move very quickly because there are very short deadlines that we have to meet uh, to take advantage of these funds. Um, there is a 10% match, so the city's portion of this will be $75,500. and. Um, uh, with your approval, we'll, we'll hopefully uh, get this uh, budgeted for in the next year and move forward with it. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Kevin, will this help us connect to the through the gate piece there, or is this just existing uh, taxiway? Yeah, this is our, this is our main runway, okay. uh, 5 and 23, and, okay. and it's 5 and 23, 5 degrees north, 23 degrees south. It depends on the direction you're approaching the runway. And then the adjacent taxiway, uh, that'll okay. be the preser so it's pavement a, it's preservation. A, it's all existing, right? It's all existing. Okay. So it does not uh, connect to uh, the runway we're currently, or the taxiway we're currently designing. Okay, thank you. All right, seeing no other questions or comments, then I'll consider resolution number 5299, Carla. Resolution number 5299, a resolution of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, ratifying the submission of a grant application to the Arizona Department of Transportation Multimodal Planning Division Aeronautics Group, authorizing the city manager to accept grant funds from the program in an amount up to $725,000 authorizing the city manager to execute a grant agreement, authorizing the city finance director to accept and disperse funds as necessary, authorizing the transfer of budget authority, and authorizing other actions in support of the grant. Mayor McFarland, I would move for approval of resolution number 5299 as presented. Second. I right, have a motion and a second. Carla, can I please get a roll call vote? <coughs> Council Member Lavender? Yes. Council Member McBride? Yes. Council Member Fitzgibbons? Yes. Council Member Herman? Yes. Council Member Powell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston? Yes. Mayor McFarland? Yes. All right, K2, consider ordinance number 3272. Thank you. Staff recommends that the Mayor and City Council authorize the City Manager to participate uh, to participate in the Arizona Department of Transportation's Airport Pavement Preservation Program for asphalt maintenance on taxiway B to include a one-inch uh, asphalt overlay and then pavement markings uh, with a construction estimate of $572,297 and to execute all contracts and documents, distribution of funds, and perform any necessary budget transfers. This is a little different. Uh, these aren't discretionary funds. These are pavement preservation funds specifically based on pavement ratings. So I haven't been up here asking for pavement preservation grant uh, fund authorization through ADOT for quite a while because we've not been eligible for uh, those grant funds. We are now back in the good graces of ADOT. And because we haven't had any projects out there, our pavement 
uh, conditions have, have really deteriorated. So um, both of these projects uh, this evening are because ADOT really wants to support the airport and get our pavement uh, back up to standard. So um, this project, uh, the design uh, for this project is 100% uh, covered and, and the construction management by ADOT. And then the uh, construction contract is fully administered by ADOT. <coughs> Um, we do have a 10% um, match, uh, which is $57,230 for this project. And I should note that if there are any cost overruns, we are responsible for that at that 10% rate. So uh, ADOT would cover any cost overruns uh, the entire amount, and then we would reimburse them our 10% share. So it's just important to note that um, we've had this stipulation in other contracts and ADOT's done a really good job of uh, keeping these things within budget. So we've been, we feel pretty confident that uh, that won't happen. But if it does and, and we don't have the uh, spending authority, we'll be back in front of you asking permission for more. But uh, hopefully that does not happen. Um, be happy to answer any questions. Anyone? So we're back in the pretty good, good graces up with the airport with, with uh, ADOT. Today yeah. with ADOT, yes. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a qualifier. <laughs> I feel like there should be a qualifier there somewhere. All right, thank you, Kevin. All right, seeing no more questions, then I'll consider it an ordinance number 3272, please, Carla. Ordinance number 3272. An ordinance of the Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, authorizing participation in the Arizona Department of Transportation's Airport Surface Treatment Program 2022, authorizing the expenditure of public funds, authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary on behalf of the City of Casa Grande for the purpose of the Casa Grande Municipal Airport's Taxiway B Section 20 Pavement Preservation Project authorizing the city finance director to disperse funds as necessary and authorizing the transfer of budget authority. Mayor McFarland, and I move for approval of ordinance number 3272 as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Carla, can I please get a roll call vote? Council member Lavender. Yes. Council member McBride. Yes. Council member Fitzgibbon. Yes. Council member Herman. Yes. Council Member Powell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston? Yes. Mayor McFarland? Yes. All right, we'll move to item L, public hearings. First item is item L1, it's public hearing in consideration of resolution number 5300, CDBG funds, Good otherwise evening. known as community development block grants. Correct. So this evening, um, we are presenting our annual action plan, <clears throat> excuse me, for um, fiscal year 22, program year 21. So we're recommending the approval of the annual action plan as presented. The Housing and Office of Housing and Urban Development announced the annual community development entitlement allocation for the city of Castro Grande would be $478,227 for fiscal year 22. In preparation of this year's annual action plan, a public hearing was held virtually on March 9th with 17 participants in attendance. They um, were able to join us by WebEx, phone, or video. The public notice was published in the English and Spanish in the dispatch and on our website. Comments received during the public meeting were related to job placement for disabled and low income, rental and utility assistance, and owner-occupied housing rehabilitation. The CDBG applications were available on our city website and were accepted from March 10th through March 30th. The annual action plan was available for public review comment from April 12th through May 12th online, and we had a copy, um, a hard copy in our office. No comments were received. The 30-day public review notice was posted in the dispatch and on our website. Upon review and evaluation of all the submitted applications, the review committee is making the following recommendations to be included in the program year 21 annual action plan. And as you all know, um, CDBG national objectives are to benefit the low to moderate income persons, aid in the prevention and elimination of slums and blight, and meet a national need. 
So the recommendations are through the public services, we can allocate up to 15% of the allocation to public services. And these are the recommendations. Seeds of Hope for their continuation of their Senior Connections program for $18,734. The Boys and Girls Club of the Sun Corridor, the Len Cola Summer Program at $13,000. The Castle Grand Police Department, they're reaching, gonna do a homeless um, prevention or intervention program, which is new, 11,000. The Opportunity Tree is a continuation of their Creative Aging Program for 10,000. CARA for the Castle Grand Homeless Services for 19,000. So that was for public services. The next recommendation is for City Hall ADA improvements. One of the allocation or uh, uh, eligible activities is to remove barriers to any public facility. So we're looking at um, changing out the, the cement, the pavers out front, and the step over by the fountain because those are risk for our residents to, to enter into our building. So they will be ADA accessibility. And also to continue on with the owner occupied housing program and code enforcement and planning and administration. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? This was a little more than last year. Yeah, we started out last year with 435 and then we ended up getting the additional CARES money. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Mary. Mr. Powell. There, I, I just have a question to ask and, and uh, <clears throat> the two ladies and yourself are probably the ones that would know the answer more. The homeless people that you're finding, are, are they normally families or are some of them single people that, that oh, need close. a place to live? How, how's that <coughs> working out? I, I guess the reason I'm asking, I've seen some of the communities have gone to these small homes that, that they've put together nicely and attractively and put a tree there and... and uh, but that would be maybe no more than two people or something like that. I really can't answer that question. I know it's, with Cara. It's, it's both, it's mm -hmm. both. It's, it's singles All the and, above. and couples. You don't see a lot of families because the families mm -hmm. typically are taken exactly. care of by other organizations. What we see is couples or singles. Singles, yeah. Mm -hmm. Men and women, both. So, I mean, I've, I've been out there. I've counted mm -hmm. them, I've talked to them, so, but yeah. The, prob the problem, Mr. Powell, with some of that is that it, some of them don't want to move into a house. No, there's a lot of them that don't want off to get so off we're, the street. So we're working with um, CG Cares, with CARA, and um, we've got some stuff that we, once that we get out of the pandemic, which we're moving <coughs> out of it now, um, I think the CARES facility is going to stay open now. We're going to open it five days a week. It was only three days a week, so... We're going to try and push people towards that, and the police are going to help us, so they have a good program here as well. So yeah. we're all working together on it. Mayor? Yes, Bob. Can, can you go back one slide sure. to where you showed? Yeah, I, I was going to congratulate you on a wide variety of agencies there. I'm glad we're spreading that around. I was familiar with all of them except the Opportunity Tree. Can you tell us about that? Yes, that used to be called the Arizona foundation for the handicap they're downtown on I think it's first street okay. so they have facilities so workforce development down there so anybody that has any kind of development on delays they have um, a wide range of folks that come to that facility okay and so but the, the creative aging program is anybody that has maybe a diagnosis of um, dementia or early dementia okay so they're trying to do like kind of like an art therapy with them for okay. memory thank you just a follow-up <clears throat> question for you, Mary Ellen. Um, on the, these that are in front of us, I had a question from a community member. So all of them have put in for funding? Correct. And when, when we give them the funding, how, how do we um, validate that they've spent the money? Um, do they have monthly reports or quarterly yes. or? Okay. Yes, they have a performance report, and then anytime they ask for a reimbursement, they either have to show timesheets or, yeah, okay. receipts of it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions or comments for Mary? Just another comment. Yeah, you know, of course, I saw the Cash Grand Police Department, and, and I was happy to see that because I see that they are really mm -hmm. doing a lot on intervention, they and are. so um, so I'm, I'm happy to see. I, you know, I'm 
that, that they're getting this support, and I'm not sure exactly how they're going to use it, but I'm sure they will, they will be use it, using it um, effectively. So yeah. I was excited to see mm -hmm. that. Yeah, we've been helping them with um, like vouchers and uh -huh. some other things, so when they find somebody on the street, they can get them into mm -hmm. shelter. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Mary. Sorry you were last. <laughs> <laughs> what you get for being a public hearing. So since this is a public <laughs> hearing, I will open the uh, floor for a public comment. John, nothing? <laughs> since you're the only public here. <laughs> In person. Okay. All right. Seeing no one uh, rush to the podium, then I will close the public hearing and I will call for a resolution number, please. Resolution number... 5300, a resolution of the Mayor and Council of the City of Casa Grande, Arizona, adopting the Community Development Block Grant CDBG Program Year 2021 Annual Action Plan. Mayor McFarland, I move to approve resolution number 5300 as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Carla, can I please get a roll call vote? Council Member Lavender? Yes. Councilmember McBride? Yes. Councilmember Fitzgibbons? Yes. Councilmember Herman? Yes. Councilmember Powell? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Huddleston? Yes. Mayor McFarland? Yes. All right, that concludes most of tonight's business. Last but not least is our reports. So I'm going to start with you, Mr. Lavender. This afternoon, we, I traveled down to Tucson to watch Vista Grande play in the state championship softball game. It was an exciting game, but they came up short, five to four. They rallied Flipped in the close. top of the seventh, similar to the rally they had Thursday night to advance to the game. This is Casa Grande's first team since 1993 that's played for a state title. Uh, Rudy Valenzuela did a great job. Those girls worked so hard this year. Uh, we were just so proud of them for all their efforts, how they represented our community. But I, there was an excellent article in the uh, Pinal Central talking about how this group was, you know, how they were developed through our little league system. Yep. And they've been together for so long. So, Brett, I know you're involved in that system as well. The Vista boys went to the quarterfinals. Union went to the top 16 in the state. So our... Our programs are in good shape. So congratulations to Coach Valenzuela. Today was his last game, mm -hmm. uh, which is sad that he didn't go out a champion uh, with a state title, but he certainly was a champion coach. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything oh. else? Yep. Oh. Yep. Um, just uh, hats off to public safety, or sorry, public safety, public work week. Um, we have close to about 125 employees so i just want to recognize them this this week um also thank you to facilities our clock is finally working <laughs> i think that we hear more i hear more about when are you guys going to fix the clock out front so i'm excited that that i attended pinnell partnership breakfast uh last friday it was our first in-person uh, breakfast so that was nice and then also i just want to reiterate last wednesday uh, for larry and staff did an excellent job uh, on our budget retreat, so that's it. Thank you, Donna. Lisa? I really don't have anything. I literally flew, flew in from Chicago and made it two minutes before I land at 4.30 and made it here by 6 o'clock, so. <laughs> Good job. I had a busy oh week goodness. moving that's my daughter. That's impressive. Moving her back home, so I was out of town, so um, nothing, nothing to report. All right. <laughs> Matt? Yeah, a uh, couple things is uh, there was a great car show and little party in downtown at the neon sign park on friday evening good turnout and few car quite a few cars and cool. it was a lot of fun um i'm with my dad so that was even better mm -hmm. and, and um i attended the budget finance and economic development policy committee for the league of arizona cities uh virtually but um there's an interesting one that's coming up there's about three items on the agenda but the the most pointed one was the one uh, is actually proposed by Maricopa, but it's, it's to allow cities to change their expenditure limit or their budget midway through the year. And it, it's, it's more directed towards if you have a big capital need or something that was unforeseen, 
especially for economic development. You know, if a big company wants to come and you need to expand your sewer treatment plan or something like that. So it'll be interesting to see. So basically we can push forward policies and try to get them <coughs> through the state legislature. But it'd be a way for us to kind of have some more local control and help promote economic development and stuff. So. And last not least, the Youth Commission interviews are this coming Saturday and the kids are excited about ending the school year. And uh, <laughs> you know, they're pretty excited they can get together and do more stuff in person now. That's Matt, it. thanks for being part of that committee too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Powell? Well, last week was a very happy week for me. The, uh, the prop memorandum that we want to send back to Washington, uh, D.C. to be uh, looked at and a feasibility study done on it and hopefully uh, be able to, uh, you know, anybody that's Democrats, uh, they're wanting to do infrastructure. This would be an ideal one. It would put the, the there's a thousand miles of piping between Davenport and and uh, Wyoming Rock Springs. That put a whole bunch of those guys back to work again on something, and it's would have water in it, which is the most <laughs> mellow uh, ingredient that you can put in a pipe and not have to worry about it. But the uh, it had gone through originally through this in a lot of this. It, goes back almost a year to when this this uh, systemic pandemic started and and everybody left everybody went home and, and I don't blame them you know <laughs> but uh, anyway the house had voted on it and it was like 53 to 4 in favor it went through really big the first time and Larry was at that one in the Senate for some reason it was pretty close and we found out that somebody had told all the Democrats to vote against this, but it didn't turn out that way, and it, and it got passed by 23 to 7, so it's on its way to Washington, D.C. Good. All right. It's right here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations, Mr. Powell. That was, Thank you. That's a lot of work, and, and well done. Well, it was, uh, as I say, it's got a long way to go yet on it, but sure. it's uh, got my fingers crossed. Mayor, I had the clock and uh, budget retreat. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you to city staff for taking care of those two things. But that's it. Okay, great. I did want to give Mr. Powell a shout out on this HCM two zero zero four. It is a uh, what's called a concurrent memorial, which means it's a it's basically uh, an ordinance that that the state of Arizona signs the the our Senate and House approve, and then it's sent to Washington, D.C. So it's a big deal. So congratulations, Mr. Powell. Well, thank you. Uh, one last time, the general plan update, 2030. <laughs> it's due tomorrow. There's oh, mine. good, good. Are you going to deliver it? <laughs> Are you hand deliver it? Uh, yes, I was going to give it to... Can I give it to you? <laughs> no. That's illegal. I think you have to, I have to mail it. No, just stick it. Just so take it over to the Cottonwood, to the, the county. Oh, it goes to the county. Yeah, okay. yeah it goes to the county. Okay. I was trying to give it to the city. <laughs> no, it goes to the county. Make sure you turn in your ballots to the county. <laughs> the county is conducting the election. We're, it's just our election. So it has to be turned in tomorrow by close of business tomorrow at the county office on Cottonwood, if you don't know where that is. It's right next to Safeway. So take it over there, hand deliver it. Uh, it's a good proclamation. Uh, it's a lot of community work's been done on it. And I uh, just wanted to give it one last shout out and make sure that you, you turn in your ballot. You don't have to do a lot of study to go yes or no on it, do you? <laughs> said it's a yes or no question. Um, so I, I mentioned it earlier, but I want to uh, kind of, this is a, my COVID piece here. So the COVID numbers are down. They look really good. Uh, the city of Casa Grande actually is, is for the first time uh, under 40 infections per 100,000, we're at 36. It's uh, lower than the county and it's lower than the state. So good numbers. 
keep up the good work, get vaccinated. It's still not too early or, or too late to get vaccinated. Because our numbers are coming down, uh, it's a direct result of the vaccinations. So please, please go get vaccinated. Now the, now the challenge is gonna be that, that um, Dorothy Powell is no longer open for vaccinations. So Sun Life has pulled all the vaccinations back to their health center. Uh, but you can get vaccinations pretty much everywhere else. You can go to Walgreens, you can go to CVS, you can go to your doctor. I think in some cases they have the vaccine. So uh, don't not go because we closed the Dorothy Powell Vaccination Center. So uh, get out there, get the vaccine. If you haven't got the second shot, get the second shot. Uh, we are gonna loosen up our mask requirements in the city hall if you are vaccinated. If you're not vaccinated, we ask that you wear a mask in our public places. So that should be an incentive to go get vaccinated. Uh, the CDC has changed their guidelines. I'm sure everybody, if you haven't watched a news broadcast, then you wouldn't know, but the CDC did change their guidelines. If you are vaccinated, you can uh, go maskless indoors and in groups and the six foot spacing has is, is been rescinded. So June 1st is when we were changing all of our hours on our libraries and on our, on our gym, on our community rec center. So that will change as well. So we should be able to increase some of our capacities as long as you're vaccinated. And we'll increase the capacities here in City Hall. So the next city council meeting on the 7th of June we will again allow public comment section, so it will be back on the agenda. And then we will also um, have larger capacity in here as well. So again, if you are vaccinated, you, can, you don't have to wear a mask. If you aren't vaccinated, you need to wear a mask. That's the rule. Now, we're gonna leave that up to you to be the police. Uh, but again, we ask you to do that for public safety and for the safety of the, those who, uh, for yourself, if you haven't been vaccinated as well. COVID, CDC, what else have I got? Um, tomorrow we're doing the, uh, the mayor's luncheon for the I thought I'm surprised you didn't mention that. Faith Alliance, yeah. I know. For the Faith Alliance. <laughs> it's because you just got off a plane, I know. <laughs> so I think it's at 11 o'clock tomorrow at the rec center. Mm -hmm. um, it's being hosted by United Way. They're, they're hosting the lunch. Uh, but I'll be there, and it we'll, uh, should be an in interesting mm -hmm. um, meeting. It'll be more about an update um, and then community action, some homelessness comments i'm sure um since i haven't written the speech yet but uh, I'll, I'll be prepared um oh also from testing standpoint we we stopped the testing site at lencola as well so if you do need a test you're going to have to go th i would recommend going to the county's website they still have all the testing facilities and and Urgent connections there, there. Yeah, or, or uh, there's a ton of them here in town, Walgreens, CBS, they're all doing testing yeah. as well. So um, just make sure that if you do think you need to be tested to do it uh, and wear a mask. Uh, like I said, June 1st, we'll, we'll kind of start to open everything up. Um, I think some of that's been announced. Well, we may, we may modify it a little bit because I think we're going to try and increase some capacities, especially at the rec center. I know I've gotten a few complaints from people uh, and the class sizes and some other things. So if you are all vaccinated, we can increase those class sizes. Is there a common theme here? <coughs> if you're vaccinated, you can, we'll, we'll increase the capacities. <coughs> If you yeah. get vaccinated, we'll increase the capacity size. <laughs> All right. Also, I want to kind of give a shout out to the library. They've got some great programs this summer. We sent out some notifications through the, through the website. But if you need Wi-Fi, you can use your library card at our, two of our libraries and check out a mobile hotspot. It's free. 
So they have mobile hotspots that you can check out, especially this summer. Try and avoid the brain brain grain or brain drain with kids being at home. And if you if you don't have Wi-Fi, then get a library card and get one to check out. It's a it's a pretty cool deal. They've got all sign, kinds of stuff. They've got dial a story. They have um, they got these tales and tales, which is T A I L S N T A L E S tales tales and tales. It's a it's a kids and teens online summer reading program. So check that out on the library's website. And then we do have a, a blood drive coming up. Uh, City of Casa Grande Employee Wellness Committee is sponsoring a community blood drive on Friday, May 28th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Recommend that you get an appointment. It's at the main library. And uh, the phone number is 877-258-4825. Or visit bloodhero.com. That's bloodhero.com if you want to sign up. And that's all I've got. Oh, no, one more thing. Hot off the presses. The uh, building new home permits for the city of Casa Grande. Um, we are at year to date 550 building permits. That's a 112% increase over last year. Last year we had 259 and last year was a record year. So <coughs> 550 for the first four months, I think my number of 2000 is safe. I think we're gonna get there. Mm -hmm. if, as long as we don't run out of lumber. <laughs> Copper wire now. <coughs> and paint. Yeah, and paint. That's the next, that's the next thing. All right, anybody else have any last minute, Mr. Powell? You know I always have the last minute. Uh, <clears throat> the last I word. just wanted to thank you for what you've done with, with the COVID situation. Uh, that uh, you've put a lot into that and, and uh, I was, t tonight on the news they had they found out that Fauci, what's his name? Fauci. Fauci yeah. had invested in that clinic where they first where this COVID came from, uh, had money invested in it. So I, really? that's, that's a weird deal. That is a weird deal. But uh, And, and uh, <clears throat> as I say, I just wanted uh, to say thanks to you for what you've done. And, and uh, well, thank I want to say thank you to John for his- Hold it. That's, that development is probably solely on your shoulders, right? The increase. Actually, Larry and I started that five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, thank you. No more comments, then I'll adjourn tonight's meeting. City Council meeting is adjourned. Good job.